Uh, with that, yeah, I guess I will, I will go through my presentation here, and, and mine's a little bit different. Um, you know, previously they were talking a bit about drought and, uh, and wildfire, or sorry, about flooding and wildflower, wildfire. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about drought, and really what I'm going to do is present a story about a scenario that we uh, experienced this past summer and how we got a group of people together uh, and, and a whole bunch of different organizations and institutions and began our response efforts. So with that, um, we'll go back to May 2nd of 2017. And so um, last spring was looking very, very good in terms of a moisture standpoint. Uh, we did have a little bit of a late fall, and so there were some indications coming out of the spring or coming into spring that we may be getting dry, but we had an awful lot of snowfall. We had an awful lot of snowfall coming through the winter, and so this is what the U.S. drought monitor looked like at the time, uh, again, May 2nd, and quickly uh, as the, the months proceeded, we had a pretty big progression, and that progression went uh, rapidly. So by the end of the May, uh, just about 98% of the state was in some type of dry condition. Uh, moving into June, uh, we had a big portion of the state that was in, a, in the D3 category, or this is an extreme drought. And coming into August, you can see uh, D4, or this darkest color here, those are the areas that, that got into the exceptional drought category. So as you can imagine, moving um, from, this, from this relatively good condition uh, into an extreme dry condition was cause of concern for many, many people. This is what it looked like. Um, we had a lot of people out taking pictures and documenting what was happening as we were going through our producer interactions and, and trying to help people work their way through this. Uh, so this is a wheat field that was, um, it was winter wheat actually, so this is regrowth that came up and, and this is the 8th of June. So you can see how spotty that regrowth was. Moving into July now, uh, actually very, very close in the neighborhood, this is what a pasture looked like and, and they had turned cattle out onto a wheat field, and so the wheat field was back here uh, in that picture. It wasn't just confined to pasture and, and uh, small grains. Moving into some of our, our corn crop, this was a late July picture of a, a corn field out there, and a lot of the wheat that was uh, coming into this scenario as a crop failure was actually harvested for feed. Uh, we'll get into some of the implications for that in a minute. Um, but some was left standing, and, and the things that were left standing out here, here's an example of a wheat field that was left to go to harvest. Uh, we did ask a lot about what were some of the yields here, but, but obviously dramatic, dramatic reduction in yields of those crops, um, and, uh, and somewhere in the neighborhood of, of some of these were 4 to 10 bushels per acre. So that kind of sets a background for, for the scenario that we were dealing with. And obviously these have pretty big implications for the animals that we work with, their caretakers, all of the management. Uh, but some of the biggest things we saw were, were shortages of feed and water, uh, and then nutrient quality issues for both those feed and water. And it, it got to be many, many people working on this because there's a lot of program and policy implications that are, are brought up in this type of scenario. And at the end of the day, it's extremely stressful for all. Uh, and this is, you know, the animals, the people, everybody who's involved in this scenario. The first step uh, along the way was, was who is our team? Who are we really bringing together uh, to work on this effort? From our standpoint, we, we have a very vast network of extension personnel. Uh, North Dakota still has extension agents in, in just about all of the counties. Um, so we had extension agents uh, locally, uh, we had regional specialists, area specialists, and, and a lot of people from our aid communication staff were also brought on board. Uh, we just kind of go right down the list, the state, state climatologists, and then um, North Dakota Departments of Agriculture, State Veterinary's Office, Department of Health, and then getting into some of the, the USDA or the federal groups, the Farm Service Agency, NRCS, Forest Service, um, both of our beef producer groups in the state, the North Dakota Stockman's Association, the Independent Beef Association of North Dakota. And we also got people in from the Northern Plains Climate Hub. Um, all, all of the people in the North Dakota congressional delegation were in contact with us. Again, trying to look for recommendations on, 
on what they should bring forward to to um, the powers that be. And a lot of the, the policy issues that come into place, um, those need to be, in order to be changed, those need to go through either the, uh, the president or the secretary of agriculture. So again, our, our congressional delegation was very, very involved, along with our governor's staff. Uh, and the other people, uh, we're on a local basis. You know, we have local clergy, financial institutions, uh, mental health professionals, and basically anybody who wants to help. And, and there were a lot of them. We started with some weekly meetings, and, and these were really kind of inf information sharing and then understanding what's happening currently on a local level. Um, a lot of the map designations that we had pointed out in a couple of slides earlier in terms of, of the severity of drought, those are driven by two things. On, on one hand, it is a what is the, the local or the, the climate, and we, we can look on a map and we can say, okay, here's how much precipitation, this is what temperature it's been, uh, but there's a ground truthing process involved. And so what is happening actually on the ground? What are those local conditions? And, and we had a lot of our extension personnel and others looking at those current conditions. Uh, also, from that standpoint, we wanted to know what that future outlook was. And as we navigated this, there were, there were always something happening and something changing with the programming and the policies. And so just so everybody was there for that information sharing session, uh, we could have that all and, and we could say it once instead of many, many times to many different people. And the other thing that we really took a lot of time to do was a needs discovery. And, and this was kind of a cross-reference. You know, we understand the climate. We understand what those local conditions are. But we've got to get the people who are being most severely affected by this. What resources do they need? Okay, is there anything that we as a team, and, and you can see how vast that team is, what can we do to help? There were a lot of, of resources that were available, and um, I, I just put a link on this slide uh, to go to, to some of the resources that we put together. And this was a kind of an information portal that we could put things on, uh, again, that, that had access, so, so it was easily accessible to a lot of people. And so this is what that drought information page looks like. And you can see we've got documents in there for the drought, uh, you know, a copy of our, our news releases, what our local conditions were, and then moving on, we had a, a local, or sorry, a, a statewide climate report that was on there. And then we had a, our extension agents collecting information on the ground, uh, again, about what are the moisture conditions, what are the stock water conditions, uh, and those types of things. So that information was put together, again, as a, as a portal for people to go and, and look at resources. Uh, the other thing that was requested that people really wanted was, was something that was quick and easy, kind of a, a single page document that had a lot of these things summarized. And so we worked with our Department of Agriculture, the North Dakota Stockman's Association, uh, and, and then had some sponsorship from our North Dakota Corn Council to get this document together to really talk about, you know, the resources that were out there from, from all of our sides. What does the Extension Service have to offer in, in terms of a lot of um, best management practices and recommendations uh, for, for the livestock side. But then also notice down here, this kids and family component. Uh, we talked about the fact that these events are extremely stressful and they're extremely stressful for, for the animals, obviously, and also for the people. And so you can see some of the documents that, that we had here, farming and ranching in tough times, responding to distressed people, stress management, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Other items that we had were some things from the Department of Ag and from the Stockman's Association, and then links to other resources that were available. And again, this document was, uh, was clickable, so we could go through and at a given time uh, just see uh, what resources were there. People could click on those links to find them. Uh, we made sure that there were water testing supplies available in, in every county, along with a guideline for testing that water. Uh, nitrates, nitrates can accumulate in crops in, in times of stress and certainly in times of dry conditions. And basically, uh, long story short, if we have high nitrates in that feed, our ruminant animals, so cattle, sheep, goats, etc., uh, we can't metabolize that and, and it leads to livestock death. So we need to understand if there are high nitrates in that feed, we need to identify them and, and make alternative plans in terms of feeding and, and feed testing. Uh, we did put together some videos. This is uh, Rick Schmidt from our Oliver County Extension Office, put together a video that, that talks about a nitrate quick test. And so a way that we can go out there, identify rapidly whether we have high nitrate concentrations in that feed. 
Uh, we did collect some, some forage samples from throughout the state. Again, we had a lot of questions and concerns about feeds that we're putting up, uh, and, and they were alternative to normal. So a lot of the wheats that were put up early, uh, we had people who, again, forage shortages in some areas, we were, we were down to 10 to 20% of normal production. And so people were trying to feed anything that they could. And sometimes we just didn't know what the nutrient components of that feed were. So with this program, we, we collected samples, we analyzed them, got results back to individual producers, but then also had in-service training sessions for our extension agents to be able to answer the questions that came out. We had a lot of agent producer interactions that were out there. And, and this map just kind of depicts what was happening with our agent force out there. And, and so the bigger the dots here, the greater the volume of calls that they were receiving and fielding related to drought. Uh, again, I, I mentioned before in terms of in-service trainings and those in-service trainings, those were related to topics that, that were really on people's minds. And so we had nitrates and feed. We have range management. Basically, we had a, a scenario where we had decreased forage production uh, this year. And moving forward, there's some pretty uh, significant management implications for making the most of, of those range and, and pasture scenarios. Um, so the other things that we had were, were stretching limited forage supplies and then feeding some of these alternative feeds. And this was more of a hands-on uh, ration developing opportunity. I did mention the stress, right, in, in that farm document. We, we have people who are dedicating their efforts to this. And, and in this uh, slide in particular, you can see some of the efforts that Sean Brotherson had. Uh, again, this title, Managing Farm Stress and Pursuing Wellness in Times of Tight Margins. So we had some issues uh, in place already with some of the ag economy, and, and we had scenarios where it was harder to make things pencil um, at the beginning of the year. And, and then we put drought on top of it, and it really, really stressed some people. So, so we cannot stress in enough the importance of, of dealing with the people side of these equations. Moving forward, uh, <clears throat> we know that there would be lasting implications, uh, but essentially what we were able to do is, is prepare for the questions that we knew that were coming, and, and then also put a, a good ear to the ground and, and address what are those newer developing issues. Certainly be cognizant of, of all sides of this equation. We've got animals, we've got people, we've got policy, we've got a lot of different things happening. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it was vital that we had a team in place and that team is ready to, to activate and to respond to uh, developing concerns as they come forward.